Good morning, uh, this is Pastor Mark, and uh, we're now in the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We're, believe it or not, in week 20 of COVID-19 uh, social distancing. Just a quick, uh, couple quick announcements, some updates. Uh, we put our reopening temporarily on hold. This was a result of Governor Wolf's uh, heightened restrictions a couple weeks ago uh, now has a limit to any indoor gatherings of 25. Also last weekend we shared an updated letter with you um, from Bishop Park uh, strongly urging us to um, to cooperate with these recent guidelines. So we are temporarily on hold but we are still inviting you to give us feedback. I had feedback from uh, other people this past week uh, your thoughts on reopening when we get to that point when we can do that uh, we are updating our email prayer distribution beginning in September we will start using the new updated uh, prayer email distribution list so if you're interested in wanting to uh, keep your email on that uh, let us know either let Sally know or Catherine in the office uh, we are updating that, and we will be using the new list beginning in September. Since we are beginning a new month, we're in August. Can you believe that? We are celebrating and recognizing all of our August birthdays. So if we uh, know someone that has a birthday uh, this month, you're, uh, you're special this month, and we're celebrating that. Uh, so we're just thankful for all of our people that are worshiping with us that are celebrating a birthday during this month of August. We bring you worship this weekend. We are here at the Tumbling Run Shelter on the Appalachian Trail. We're just, uh, we're not far above Old Forge Road. We're not too far from Camp Penn. Uh, I want to thank Daryl Hospelhorn. He's our trail guide this morning. Uh, he brought Warren and I in here so we wouldn't get lost. So it's kind of a joy that we can bring you worship this weekend from this uh, shelter. Uh, you might notice there's two shelters here. I'm at the non-snoring shelter. The one immediately to my right is the snoring shelter. Two shelters here. Uh, interesting history that I read about the, this place this past week. These Appalachian Trail shelters here were originally built in 1936. And they were built by the CCC camp, which uh, was down where Camp Penn currently is now. So that's not too far from here. They were rebuilt, though. They were renovated and rebuilt back in the 80s. And at that time, they were done by the Potomac Appalachian Trail Club, which uh, still maintains uh, these shelters to this day. So we're in the beautiful Misho State Forest, uh, just a little bit... Uh, north of Waynesboro this morning and it's a joy that we can bring you worship from this place today this weekend let's prepare ourselves now to worship the Lord join me in the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of the of God the Father Almighty. From ten, tenths he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nathaniel Byers, and I'm the worship leader here at Faith United Methodist Church. So each week we deal with a specific theme as it um, pertains to our Christian life. And this week's theme is God's leading. When we are led by God, there's always a certain sense of us needing to sacrifice something, us needing to relinquish our own desires, our own sin, and um, giving it over to God so that we can be led and renewed by his plans for us. So all of these songs for this week have to do with um, God's leading in some capacity. Um, whether that's um, um, understanding and drawing to his sacrifice or it's um, understanding that he's there for us every step of the way. This first song is called Lead Me to the Cross. Oh, 
Coming out of a time of prayer, and I just want to share a few things from the past week uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer together here this morning. We're thankful again for the summer season. Uh, we continue to be really dry and hot here in the Waynesboro area, so uh, if Lord willing, we, we would like a little bit of rain. There are some thunder showers in the forecast for the next couple days. Maybe it we'll get a few of those, and that might help some. But we are enjoying the beautiful summer season. I can't believe we're in the month of August already. But all the blessings that this time of year offers us the opportunity to be outside, uh, enjoying God's creation around us is always a blessing and we're thankful. We continue to be blessed as a church family. Uh, again, I just want to thank everyone for your continued faithfulness, your support, your cooperation. Uh, we'll continue to do our best to keep us connected, uh, to keep us updated, uh, we'll, we'll do our best to bring you uh, worship each weekend. And I just want to thank Warren again, Nathaniel again, Daryl this morning, and many others who are helping us, uh, helping us with our uh, worship uh, week to week. Uh, we are just very fortunate. We are very blessed, and we're just thankful. Good news to share. This morning, both Ed Miller and Greg Kugler both had successful surgery this past week, and they are both home and recuperating at home. Uh, we want to just keep them in our thoughts and prayers as they recuperate, but we're very thankful that they are home now and recuperating at home. We also wanted to share um, Doris Sheldon, the service that was planned for Doris this coming Wednesday evening at Rotary Park has been canceled. Uh, the family just felt that due to the increasing risk here in Franklin County, um, that it would be smarter just to not have the service. There's just too much risk right now. Uh, so we honor that decision. It was a difficult decision, but we wanted to be sure that everyone knew um, that the service that was planned for Wednesday night at Rotary Park uh, to celebrate uh, Doris uh, Sheldon's life and ministry has been canceled. Uh, it will not be held. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Lord, we're just so thankful for this beautiful summer season. We're thankful for this place. We're thankful for this trail. It's just amazing, O oh Lord, that it goes the whole way from Maine to Georgia. 
And we're here uh, not far from Waynesboro where the trail crosses and we're just thankful for this beautiful place in the Michaud State Forest that we can enjoy and for the many, many people that had opportunity and will have opportunity to hike this trail and this shelter, O oh Lord, that provides a place of rest and peace and security for hikers. It's also a good image for us today, O oh Lord, as being in your will, as we're focused as that is our theme this week, uh, being in your will is a shelter to us, and we're thankful. We're thankful for many people that are helping us, O oh Lord. We're just blessed as a church family. Just continue to guide us and be with us as we travel through this together. We're thankful that both Ed and Greg are home now, recuperating from surgery. Just continue to be with them, O oh Lord, and just keep them surrounded in your healing presence. Just be with us and guide us. And Lord, just prepare us too as we have the opportunity today to come to your table together. And just continue to be our prayer coach, O oh Lord. Continue to teach us how to pray as you teach all your disciples all over the world how to pray with these words. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, maybe we need to go over this one more time. Do we have to? Well, sweetie, I don't know if you're getting a good grasp of the ratios here. Fine. Okay, all right, step by step. Before we spend any money, what's the first thing that we do? Give to God. Good, and why do we do that? Because he first loved and gave to us. Good, 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 good. Okay, great. Now the second jar here is for so many different things. Hold on. What? God lives in heaven, right? Yeah, he lives in heaven. And heaven has streets paved with gold, right? Streets paved with gold, sure, yes. So why does he need my money if I don't even have a job? <laughs> okay, all right, so good question. So basically when we give to God, we're, we're giving to the church. So the church gives the money to God? No, the church keeps the money. Oh, does God know about this? <laughs> yes, he... Uh, Basically built the system, yeah. Okay, good. Okay. See, sweetie, as you grow up, there is nothing better than giving back to God. In the Bible, it's the only place God says, test me on this. When it comes to your money, he says, test me. It's almost like he's saying, I dare you. And your mom and I, we do just that. Even when things are tough, we always give the first part of our money back to God. And then the church takes that money and does all kinds of things to make God famous, uh, like camps and mission trips and even VBS that you love so much, and even helps out people that are in need. You can't outgive God. And when God says test him and you do it, he will come through every single time. Okay, Dad, I get it. I do have one question, though. Uh, okay. Why do we need to test God if he already knows all the answers? That's, that's good. Let me just retrace my steps here just for a minute. <sighs> I'm Alora Kohler. I'm here at Renfrew, and I'm going to be reading Psalm 27, a Psalm of David. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Should I fear anyone? The Lord is a fortress protecting my life. Should I be frightened of anything? When endeavors come at me trying to eat me up, it's they, my foes and my enemies, who stumble and fall. If an army camps against me, my heart won't be afraid. If war <laughs> comes up against me, I will continue to trust in this. I have asked of one thing from the Lord. <laughs> it's all I seek, to live in the Lord's house all the days of my life, seeing the Lord's beauty and, consi and consistently adoring his temple. Because he will shelter me in his own dwelling during troubling times, we will hide it. he will hide me in a secret place in his own tent. He will send, set me high, safe up, safe on a rock. Now my head is higher than the enemies surrounding me, and I will offer sacrifices in God's tent, sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and praise the Lord. Lord, listen to my voice when I cry out. Have mercy on me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek God's face. Lord, I do seek your face. Please don't hide it from me. Don't push your servant aside angrily. You have been my help. God who saves me, do not neglect me. Don't leave me all alone. Even if my father and mother left me all alone, the Lord would take me in. Lord, teach me your way because of my opponents. Lead me on a good path. Don't give me over to desires of my enemies because of false witnesses and violent accusers have taken their stand against me. But I have sure faith that I will experience the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Hope in the Lord. Dear God, I pray that our hearts are ready to hear God <laughs> Mark's message today. Um, I pray that we are able to hear your words and be able to hear you through his message. God, I pray that we are ready for you this week and that you prepare us for whatever we have for this week. In your name, amen. I want to thank uh, Alora Kohler for bringing the scripture to us today and her prayer. Uh, Alora is getting ready to soon uh, go to uh, college, so we're just thankful. She also shared the Apostles' Creed uh, as part of our worship today. We're focused on God's will, and um, we're in. Uh, we're taking a journey through this uh, Common English translation of the Bible this year, and that's our theme. Henderson family uh, had recently taken a, a family trip to visit the Johnstown Flood Museum, and they shared some things with me that were very interesting, and I want to share. They gave me permission to share some of the things that they learned from their trip just recently. But the um, First United Methodist Church, which at the time of the Johnstown Flood, May 31st, 1889, was the uh, Methodist Episcopal Church of Johnstown. Uh, what I learned from them uh, this past week is that that church building actually took the brunt of the flood wave. And amazingly, when that occurred, the um, exterior, the actual structure of the building, was not damaged at all. Now, of course, the inside of the building, the building wasn't watertight, so the inside of the building really was a, a complete loss, but the structure, the building itself, survived the, the, the brunt of that flood wave. In fact, there's a, a plaque. Uh, there's plaques put on those original buildings that survived, and there's one on this church. Uh, when that happened, um, the, the church building actually parted the wave so that those buildings that were behind the church that were in the shadow of the church were spared they were protected because the the church building took the brunt of that flood wave when the crews first went into Johnstown I read this past week that the initial uh, group of people who were working there wanted to condemn the church they ordered it to be tore down but a general uh, Hastings uh, had 
saw the value of it since it was spared, he saved it. And the building stands yet to this day as kind of a living memory of that flood. And one of the buildings, one of the buildings that was spared. And that's a comforting thought because I'm sure many people have seen that as the providence of God. That if we're in God's will, we do have that shelter and that protection of being in God's will. The challenge is that, you know, being there doesn't always prevent us from hardship and it doesn't always prevent us from difficult times, but that shelter is always available to us in the will of God. Hikers traveling the Appalachian Trail, there's even some hikers here today and hikers that travel this trail find uh, a temporary place of shelter and rest here. You can prepare, you can plan, and people that are serious about hiking this trail, I'm sure, do a lot of that. But the reality is when they set out on the trail, just like in life, even though we prepare and we make our plans, there are good days and there are days that are not so good. We have good weather days when we're hiking the trail. We have days on the trail that, that aren't so good weather-wise. We sometimes encounter the rattlesnakes and the copperheads and the other dangers of the trail, just like as we're journeying through life. But we have an opportunity today to bring you worship this weekend from what I'm told is one of the nicest shelters on the whole Appalachian Trail. So that's kind of a joy. There's a journal here, I'm told, that uh, people can kind of leave their name and leave uh, kind of a message as they travel through. So that uh, journal kind of is a record of, uh, of the stories that are kind of connected with this place. But in the 27th Psalm that Allura brought for us today as our scripture, kind of our main uh, focus of scripture today, uh, as we're focused on God's will, we do have this wonderful image that David give, gave us when he uh, composed this song, this Psalm 27. He said, because he will shelter in his own dwelling, because he will shelter me in his own dwelling during troubled times, he will hide me in a secret place in his own tent. So we have this wonderful image in this 27th Psalm that if we're in the will of God, God will always provide a place of shelter for us, especially when we're on a journey through troubled times. And all of us encounter troubled times in life from now and again. I had a difficult funeral service to share in two weeks ago. Uh, many of you might uh, have known that. I put out some prayer requests uh, for the family and people involved and for myself during this time. It was a very difficult uh, funeral service. It was a large funeral service two weeks ago in Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. And the circumstances of that made words very difficult to find, made words very difficult uh, really to share. But what we ended up doing and what was most helpful to us and continues to be is that we just reminded ourselves of those timeless truths of God. Those, those wonderful words that just enable us to hold on when all of the world around us seems to be turned upside down. And that was uh, very helpful to us two weeks ago and it will continue to be for, for my friend and uh, my friend's family and for everybody that's just been, their world has been rocked by this thing. Uh, that has been the most helpful to us. So we're just very thankful. I can remember one time a woman very early in my ministry. I remember a very difficult time that we shared together that she had lost her husband and they had been married for many, many years. And to this day, I can still remember her sharing the words with me, you know, 
how difficult it was when that casket lid was closed for the very last time and how final that just seemed to be. And we have those difficult experiences in life that many of us have, have experienced and shared with others. And we have this prayer in our funeral liturgy near the end of the service that shares words like this, these very comforting words that when all else fails, you still are God. When all else fails, you still are God. When we journey through life, just like when we're hiking the Appalachian Trail, it's not always pleasant. But this psalm and all of the scriptures that we read this past week as we're focused on God's will together remind us that if we walk with the Lord, if the Lord is our trail guide, just like Darrell was our trail guide this morning in, in getting here to this, uh, to this Appalachian Trail shelter, if we walk with the Lord, the promise of this beautiful psalm is that he will always provide a shelter on the way where we can seek protection and rest even when we encounter the dangers of the trail. One of the other images that David gives us in the 27th Psalm is that God will place us up on a high rock. So we thought um, we would come here. We're just off of Swift Run Road. Um, and we're up on, uh, there's actually two names for this that I found. One is Monument Rock, the other is Schaefer Rock. Uh, but we're up here on a high rock. Uh, that's another wonderful uh, metaphor that uh, we have in this psalm of the protection of being in God's will. So it's just wonderful that we can share here today at this place. This is a popular place where people come uh, really from all over to mountain climb here. It's kind of well known with mountain climbers, but these rocks have been here for, for many, many centuries and will be here for many centuries to come. And being placed up on a high rock is just another wonderful metaphor image that David gives us of being in God's will. One of the other images that David gives us in the 27th Psalm is that God will place us up on a high rock. So we thought um, we would come here. We're just off of Swift Run Road. Um, and we're up on, uh, there's actually two names for this that I found. One is Monument Rock, the other is Schaefer Rock. Uh, but we're up here on a high rock. Uh, that's another wonderful uh, metaphor that uh, we have in this psalm of the protection of being in God's will. So it's just wonderful that we can share here today at this place. This is a popular place where people come uh, really from all over to mountain climb here. It's kind of well known with mountain climbers, but these rocks have been here for, for many, many centuries and will be here for many centuries to come. And being placed up on a high rock is just another wonderful metaphor image that David gives us of being in God's will. This next song is called Blessed Assurance. So when we are following God's leading, um, we have to have faith. We have to have trust in who he is, his plans for us, and the understanding that when we are saved and that we, when we are um, actively sanctified by God, um, he's there for us. He's not going to walk away from us. He's not going to leave us behind. And this song talks about his assurance, and assurance which means, you know, a steadfast love and provision you know, being there for us in the good times and bad. So in following God's leading, we will inevitably make mistakes. We will inevitably miss the mark, screw up, and um, do things that hurt God. So this song talks about how um, our continued act of trying to submit and growing in the midst of our mistakes, um, God's going to be with us through all of that and um, we don't have to worry we don't have to be afraid of um, 
God leaving us or forsaking us because he will never leave us or forsake us. So this is blessed assurance. to worship you. Um, I pray that um, we would be um, open and would submit to your leading um, in every aspect of our lives. Um, we as humans like control. We like to be in the driver's seat in so many aspects of our lives. Our decisions, um, what we do with our time, um, and what we do with so many other things. But Lord, I pray that you would use us and that we you, you would use the freedom that you give us, because Lord, you give us ultimate freedom and ultimate peace. I pray that in the renewing and transformation of who we are, that we would use that freedom and that we would use that renewal for your glory, because you loved us first and you um, died for us so that we could be free of our sins. So in understanding your leading, um, help us to see the freedom in what we can do and the freedom and um, being free from our sins. So, Lord, um, pray that we can relinquish where we want to do um, things selfishly for our own gains, and that you would um, that you would convict us of those things. Um, Lord, I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be in prayer together. Oh, Lord, we're just so thankful that we could share together this weekend in worship and. We're thankful that if we walk with you, if we're in your will, that we always have that wonderful shelter of your protection and that you place us up on a high rock 
that we can find that place of rest, that place of peace, even if we're going through difficult times. Send us now out into the new week. We're so thankful for the gift of life in this new week now as we begin August together. We continue to be thankful for many blessings. And just send us out, O oh Lord, to follow you. Send us out to share all those blessings and good things you share with us with others. And all God's people said.